What is up guys, my name is Scourge and you're watching Anyone Can Trap, the YouTube and Patreon series designed for absolute beginners and above in FL Studio who want to learn how to make electronic music. The goal of this series is for you to complete an entire trap song from start to finish while learning FL Studio along the way. And remember, if you want access to all of the presets and samples I use in this or any future tutorial, as well as early access to every single episode, all you gotta do is head over to my Patreon right here or click the link in the description and for only $2 a month you can get all of these items and much, much more. All right, so without further ado, let's get into the next episode. In this episode, we're actually gonna be starting our song. But to do that, we're gonna have to talk about a little bit of music theory. No, no, wait, oh, no, don't click away. Not just yet. I promise, it sounds boring, but it's really important and it'll really help your production a lot. We're gonna be going over the basics of BPM and scales. Damn, stop doing that. We'll get into the fun. We'll get into the fun stuff soon. Prom tough sentence. We'll get into the fun stuff soon. We'll get into the fun stuff. We'll get into the fun stuff soon. I promise. So up here in this box, you'll see a number. That is our BPM, 130. FL Studio initializes at 130, and usually this is the standard BPM for a deep house song you might hear from like uh, Benny Benassi or more recently Jaws. BPM stands for beats per minute. Ooh, my laptop is freaking the fuck out. BPM stands for beats per minute, which literally defines itself. It's how many beats will be played in the entire minute so if we move this up it'll play more if we move it down it will play less so this is essentially the speed or tempo of our song trap music is usually anywhere from 145 to 165 bpm these numbers can vary and they're not set in stone for example kaiwachi he'll produce at sometimes 174 175 and dylan francis will be seen producing at 90 to 110 but the way they produce some of their tracks can still be considered trap music even if they don't fall within that bpm range so as a reference for beginners i'm quickly just going to list off the different genres and their bpm so house music and trance are usually between about 125 and 135 dubstep is usually between 135 and 155 drum and bass is usually 160 to 180 and moon baton is anywhere from 90 to 110. Now these BPMs can range and they don't define the genre solely, but it's more of a reference sheet for beginners to come back to. What? It, it, it's it's done. Done. What the hell is that? <laughs> Jesus Christ! In 2009, DJ Dave Nada was playing a show in Washington, D.C. He decided to slow down Chucky's song Moomba, remixed by Afrojack, from its original 128 BPM to 108 BPM, thus creating Moomba Don forever. Okay, yeah, cool fact and all, but uh, just, just warn me next time you're gonna do that. Uh, yeah, uh, sorry about that. I thought the explosion would be a little more uh, subtle. Patrick Warburton? Uh, no, that's actually my uh, cousin. Uh, my name is Patrick Warburton. <laughs> you think you can afford <laughs> Patrick Warburton? I mean, look at your look at your shirt. First of all, I mean, you can't even afford <laughs> Gap. You oh man, you get out of here, Wattrick. Anyway, for this song, I want to be working at about a 150 BPM. In my opinion, this is the sweet spot for trap. It's not too slow to be compared to dubstep, but it's not too fast to touch anywhere near drum and bass. So we can come up here and just right click, and you can actually see a list of the BPMs to choose from. We can click 150. You can also manually do this by dragging up and down but it's very precise, so I prefer just using the menu here. This is a good BPM because it keeps us hyped up, but at the same time still has that half beat time that kind of keeps us swaying, you know? And I'll explain what I mean by half time right now. So if we were to go into our channel rack and fill every kick at every beat and play it. Actually, for this example, I'm gonna alternate between kicks and snares to, to help further prove what I'm trying to show. You see, that's very fast. That's at full time at 150 BPM. That's a little fast, but if we were to separate these uh, by two beats instead of just one, this is the beat that we're looking for. That's the timing that we're looking for. So we're gonna be working at 150 half time. So technically the BPM is 75, but it gives us a lot more room to work with when we're at 150 BPM. So that's enough talk about BPM. Let's talk a little bit about scales. Now, scales are basically a series of notes that all coincide with the same frequency or pitch. There are two main scales, major and minor. Major scales are usually more lively and happier, while minor scales sound a little darker, more somber, almost sad. So we're gonna probably be using a minor scale for our song because trap inherently kinda has a darker tone to it. 
You know, major scales are not completely out of play, but for this sake, I want to use a minor scale. But just so there's no stone unturned, I'm going to show you guys the major scale first. So to do this, let's open up our channel rack. Let's right click on our top sampler, which is the kick. We're going to insert and then put in an FL keys. Now FL keys comes with FL studio and it's just a basic piano synthesizer. There are also options for uh, an organ and like an e-piano for the roads, but we're not going to worry about that right now. All we have to do is right click on FL keys and come right here to piano roll. Click there. This will open up our piano roll, which we can now use to map out our notes and our chords. So scales basically work as a formula moving up or down notes at different intervals. I know, it sounds really boring, but these intervals work as whole steps and half steps. Whole steps are two keys, so that means if we were to move up a whole step from C, we'd be moving up to D. And if we were to move a half step, we'd only be moving one key, so we'd be moving from C to C sharp. So to show you our major scale, I'm going to start by our root note C. C5, that's usually the middle of the keyboard, that's known as the middle C. I'm going to fill it out so it matches a beat. And now this is the formula for a major scale. You can write this down if you would like to reference it because it never changes. What it is is a whole step, a whole step, a half step, another whole step, another whole step, one more whole step, and then end on a half step. And it ends on C6, the same note we started on, just an octave above. Let's play it back. And you did it, that's our C major scale. And what's cool about this is we can actually press Control A to highlight every single note and then move it. And we can now transpose this scale wherever we want and it's still a major scale. So even at F, it's an F major scale now. F sharp, it's an F sharp major scale. It never changes from that scale. So now that we have the basic idea of what scales are, let me show you the minor scales. So I'm going to delete all these notes except for the first one, our root note, C5. Now the minor scale works in this formula. It is a whole step, a half step, a whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step. Now this is our C minor natural scale. Let's listen back. So you can already hear it kind of has a darker tone to it. It's not as like uplifting. It's not as major. It's now in minor. Now not to make things any more confusing, but there are actually two more variations of the minor scale. No, wait, 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 stop doing that. I'm, it's, I'm, it's, I'm serious. It's actually really easy to transition into these two other scales from our minor natural scale. The first one is the harmonic minor scale, which is literally just the seventh note brought up half a step. And there you go. That's the harmonic minor scale. So you can see it kind of added almost like a, an eerie vibe at the end, almost like Arabian or Middle Eastern. This is probably my favorite of all the scales, to be honest. Is that nerdy to say? Ah, probably. And the second variation of the natural minor scale is the melodic minor scale. And the only difference between this and the harmonic minor scale is just the sixth note is also up half a step. Boom. Listen back. So you can see this one ends on a brighter note. It almost ends, it actually ends with the last five notes of a major scale. So it's almost like it starts off dark and then ends off kind of melodic. So I'm just gonna shift these back down to the natural minor scale. There we go. And the reason I'm showing you these is because we're gonna be using the first note in our song to figure out what scale we'll be using to then figure out what future notes and chords we can use. And I know that sounds kind of convoluted and dumb, and it kind of is, but it works. And it's, I feel like it's a good way to help incorporate scales to teaching you guys how to start our song. But it also cleans up a lot of the work. So instead of just randomly clicking around a bunch of notes, we now have a scale or a set of notes we know will work within our song. So I know that the first note of our song is going to be F sharp, and that's really only because that's what I made it. You can make the first key of your song whatever you want, and remember that these scales can be transposed to whatever key that it's in. 
So like I said, I'll probably be using a minor scale. So I'm just gonna transpose this by Control A, highlight it all, and then I'm just gonna drag it up to F sharp. So now I am in an F sharp natural minor scale. And we are going to use this as a reference for our song. And I'm gonna show you how to do that while we open our first bell synth. So let's come in here, let's mute the FL keys, and I'll tell you why in a little bit. We're gonna right click on FL keys, insert, and we're gonna put in a citrus. Citrus is a really powerful synthesizer inside of FL Studios. It actually comes with it, so it's looked over a lot. So I'm not gonna be going too in depth on sound design this episode. I will be getting to that in future episodes. But for now, we're just gonna use presets. <laughs> it's cool, don't worry. Don't feel bad about using presets. To be honest, they're really great tools for beginning producers to kind of reverse engineer a sound and figure out how it works. In fact, you could probably learn a whole lot more from breaking down one of these synths than I could ever explain in a 10 minute episode. So we'll just come up here to our arrow, click that down in the top left and go to our presets. And now our preset list will open up and Citrus has a crap ton of presets and it's awesome. I highly suggest beginners to just go through every single one of these and see what makes each one tick. For now, we just want a simple bell. So we're gonna come into Bell Mopan. Be bell Mopan. Bell Mopan? Bell Mopan. So we're gonna be using Bell Hop today. And if you're wondering how I did that, you can just right click and rename color and icon and you can change the name of whatever the sampler will be. It won't actually change anything within it, it's just the name. So the only thing I wanna change about this synth is that god awful reverb, like holy crap, it lasts for so goddamn long. So we're gonna come into the citrus, we're gonna come into our FX tab, which is actually already open, come down here to the R tab, which stands for reverb. And the far right here is our dry wet controller. Now you would think dragging it all the way down would turn off our reverb, but it actually doesn't. It just puts it at a negative 100 value. So we want it to be in the middle somewhere. I'm gonna say about 10%, maybe even a little bit lower, like nine. Let's hear that. So much better. So we're gonna right click on this and come into our piano roll. And you might've already noticed that we have ghost tracks in here now. These are known as ghost channels. These are the notes that are in our scale here in FL Keys. But since we muted them, they can't be heard, but we can now use them as a reference. And if these aren't showing up, make sure you're in the same pattern as your keys, and also make sure that you come into this menu, Helpers, and Ghost Channels is checked. We know our first note is gonna be F sharp, like I said, so let's just place that right there. Now, it starts to descend. So we'll probably be working from the right down since this, this is how the scale would descend from start to finish. So the next note is E. Let's see how that sounds. That, uh, that doesn't yeah, suck. Yeah, it sucks. Thank you, Whack Trick. Yeah. Thank you. I know. So this must not be our scale. So let's try the melodic minor scale. And the way we can actually do that, I'm glad I messed it up because now I can show you, the way to come into the piano roll of our FL keys easily, instead of having to go into channel rack and right clicking and all that, is we can double right click on ghost notes. And boom, now we're in the FL keys. So let's transpose these notes. Perfect. So let's try that one. Let's try E, oh, I'm sorry, F. So let's try that one. There we go, that is oh, so much- Jesus, finally. Thank you, Wattrick! So now let's keep descending down. We know it's still going down from what we heard in earlier episodes, so it's dun, dun, dun. And there's kind of a pause, so I'm gonna have a beat break there. And I'm gonna come down to the next note in our scale, which is D sharp. And let's play it. I'm not saying a word. Nothing. Sounds great. So obviously, this one, Jesus Christ, I swear to God. So we must still be in the wrong scale. So it must be the harmonic minor scale. So let's move this sixth note down a half step. 
And yes, I did do this on purpose to show you guys how you can use process of elimination to kind of find which scale you'll be using for any future use. Oh, I never changed the note. <clears throat> Gotta remember to change the note. There we go. <clears throat> There we go, now it has a nice eerie, creepy vibe to it, which is exactly what we're looking for. So now I'm going to quickly just fill in the rest of our notes by ear, from what I remember in the original one. Now, I do encourage you guys to create your own synth line using these notes now. It doesn't have to be crazy complicated, you know, mine's pretty simple in general. But I do suggest trying to make your own. If you want to follow along, please feel free, there's no worries. But I want you guys to kind of try to take the reins and make your own sounds. Drag this out a little bit longer. So now on this last note, I want it to descend again. So I'm just going to come to our scale for reference. The next note down, C sharp. <laughs> Excuse me that in, now let's check it out. Awesome, we have our first four bars of an actual song. So if we paste it into our playlist now, we can actually rename it here up in our menu, rename and color. We're gonna rename it Bell Lead. Oh, Nell Lead. Who's Nell Lead? So I'm gonna paste another one right next to it, but as you may have already heard, this synth line is a little repetitive with that one D note constantly continuing. So I want to have a variation after our first four bars. Usually in music, you want it to change up every eight to 16 bars just so the listener doesn't get too comfortable or bored with it. But in this case, it's so repetitive that I'm going to change it up every four bars. So I believe I went up in notes after two bars in this, so I'm gonna just paste an F right here. I think this is it. Yeah, there we go. Again, and I implore you to make your own variation of this, but if you feel like following along, that's your own prerogative. There we go. Now, one thing I do want to point out as well is that I do have some of these notes on an offbeat. And an offbeat is basically what it sounds like. It's what's happening in between these two beats. So if I was to put on our metronome up here, and that blue light is on, and I press play, you can hear how that metronome comes in at every beat. And this note plays in between two of those metronome hits. which makes it an offbeat note. Now, I did want to talk about a little bit more in this episode, but it's already a lot longer than I wanted it to be. But now, most of this music theory stuff is behind us. Now we can actually get into the meat of our song. We're gonna be talking about 808 bass, we're gonna get into drum patterns in the next episode, and I'm really excited. Thank you guys again so much for watching. Remember, if you want all the presets and samples I have in this or any future tutorial, as well as early access to every video on my channel, or you just feel like helping a brother out, you can head over to my Patreon where you can become a patron today. All right, guys, I'll see you in the next episode. Peace!